South Korea's economic contraction may be worse than expected next year. According to Wall Street News, the Bank of Korea has cut the country's economic growth forecast for 2023 to 1.7% from 2.1% previously, thus proved its weaker expectation for the future economy. South Korea's economy is facing serious challenges due to the decline of in exports of smartphones, chips, and automobile. The latest data shows that South Korea's export shipments fell by 14% year-on-year in November. In addition to the decline in exports, the South Korean government is also facing a crisis in the housing bond market. At present, the market expects that the Korean economy may usher in a turnaround in the second half of the next year. With the end of the semiconductor inventory cycle adjustment, South Korea's export may usher in a rebound. South Korea's trade performance is often seen as a key barometer of international demand as South Korea is a global supplier of many key products, including chips, displays, and fine oil. According to Morgan Stanley, corporate profit recession is comparable to the 2008 financial crisis and may trigger new lows in the U.S. stocks. Recently, Morgan Stanley strategist Michael Wilson said that the U.S. stock market will usher in the worst year since the global financial crisis, and corporate earnings will suffer the same fate. The strategist, who is, who is staunchly bearish on the stocks, also pointed on the worrisome signs of recent weaknesses in the U.S. economy, even as the inflation has now begun to retreat from record highs. The Morgan Stanley team is currently leaning towards a bearish EPS forecast of $180 for 2023, compared with analysts' average estimate of 231. In August 2008, the S&P 500 could fall to 3,000 next year. We can see that last week S&P 500 has dropped from 4,196 to currently 3,817.66, and that's almost 7% decrease. Combined with the current equity risk premium that is lower than it was in August 2008, the S&P could fall to 3,000 next year despite higher valuations. This represents a 16% drop from today's closing price. The government of Ghana has announced that in order to prevent further deterioration of its economic, financial, and social conditions, the country will suspend debt payments on euro bonds, commercial terms loans, and most bilateral obligations. The Fed raised interest rates and the rise in the US dollar index became the prelude to this debt crisis in the emerging market. 19th, the Ghanaian government issued a statement saying that it will suspend the payment of euro bonds, commercial term loans, and most bilateral obligations, saying that this move is a temporary emergency measure pending further agreement with relevant creditors. The country's euro bonds due in 2032 fell after the announcement. Ghana was once considered a model of African development. As a producer of coca, oil, gold, and diamond, Ghana was regarded as rising star among emer emerging economies. However, media reports saying that Ghana is now sandled with about 55 billion in debt, which is equivalent to 80% of the country's GDP, according to the recent government figures. The rising cost of living sparked protests in the capital, Accra, earlier this summer and the government formally requested IMF support in July. At the end of November, the Ghanaian government announced that all large gold mining companies must sell 20% of their refined gold to the country's central bank. The new policy is to match the government's gold for oil plan and aims to solve the problem of dwindling foreign exchange reserves. This will come into effect on January 1st the next year. 
Wall Street has previously mentioned that in the 12 months to the end of May this year alone, Ghana's outstanding foreign debts increased from 24.6 billion US dollars to 28.4 billion. And the foreign exchange flows of foreign investment into domestic debts have also continued to increase. Repaying these rising debts will only be possible through larger net inflows. Meanwhile, Ghana is struggling to stem in the fall in its currency, the city which has fallen nearly 60% against the dollar so far this year, making it one of the world's worst performing currencies. Ghana is facing bankruptcy crisis. Ghana's inflation rate also soared to 40.4% in October, triggering public protests in many places. People generally believe that the Ghanaian government has squandered the IMF loan, but they are forced to repay the debt with the government. In November, Ghana's inflation rate exceeded 50%. Ghana is not the only country facing bankruptcy crisis. Earlier this year, Sri Lanka's debt default has become a fact. At the same time, Argentina, a South American country that recently received IMF loan assistance, is also hovering on the verge of bankruptcy. Turkey, whose trade deficit has seriously exceeded the standard, may sound the alarm of default at any time. More than a dozen emerging co market countries, including Egypt, Pakistan, and Ukraine, are struggling on that quagmire. At the same time, the World Bank issued a warning that 25% of emerging markets are close are in or close to debt distress, and more than 60% of low-income countries are facing debt stress, are facing debt distress. The sovereign debt of emerging market countries is mainly external debt, accounting for more than two-thirds of the sovereign debt, and a large part is short-term debt. The high pressure and the urgency of debt repayment are self-evident. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to press like and subscribe. See you next time.